adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. Most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Here is Michael Savage. from the Washington Times sitting in for Michael Savage on the Savage Nation. Michael is off tonight, uh, but uh, too far away. And I just want to thank you, Michael, once again, my friend, uh, for the wonderful honor of sitting in for you. Uh, I just Time just flies by whenever I'm on the show. You have an absolutely wonderful audience. And I am particularly looking forward to trickle-down tyranny it's coming out April 3rd. Uh, I think you can already even order your advanced copy. Go to michaelsavage.com to get the latest, not just on the upcoming conservative manifesto for victory, but on the latest must-read sizzling stories you cannot find any where else? Everything from corruption regarding uh, the Texas billionaire Stanford to the latest outrage that is now occurring in the Middle East and across Canada as radical Islamist groups tied to Al-Qaeda are now spreading like a cancer right north of our border in Canada. These are stories you cannot find anywhere else except on michaelsavage.com. And there is a particular issue that I want to talk to all of you about. And it's something that um, has touched me and I know has touched a lot of people uh, ever since the announcement that Breitbart, Andrew Breitbart passed away. The conservative internet blogger at the age of 43 died. Uh, for what reasons, we don't know, but he passed away. And yet, as everybody has been mourning the death of Andrew Breitbart, Breitbart himself said that he had a damaging video of Obama, that he had something that could potentially even alter the election. And today, Breitbart.com has released edited segments of that video. Apparently, it's about half an hour long. It's going to be played in its entirety later tonight. But already edited segments have been released to the media. We are going to play some of those segments for you. But by introduction, to set it up, essentially what the video is, it captures Barack Hussein Obama while he was a student at Harvard Law School in 1991, essentially 20 years ago, 21 years ago to be precise. And there was a protest on campus on behalf of Professor Derrick Bell Jr. Now, you may ask, who is Derrick Bell? And why were protesters out there defending Bell and supporting Bell? Derrick Bell was a radical Marxist black nationalist. He passed away. But he was one of the leading theorists of what is called critical race theory, meaning he was a law professor, a legal theorist, who argued that America's justice system is inherently ingrained in its, quote, white point of view. That because it was constructed by white people, by white Americans, it is inherently, systemically, fundamentally, bigoted, racist, and biased against blacks and minorities. But there is more to Derrick Bell. Derrick Bell was not just a radical academic leftist. Derrick Bell was not just some black liberation theologist who defended the likes of Reverend Jeremiah Wright. In fact, Derrick Bell and Jeremiah Wright are literally 
two birds of the same feather. They both champion radical black nationalism. They both champion anti-Americanism. They both champion hatred of white America. Derek Bell was also a lifelong supporter of Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. He defended Farrakhan's hatred of the Jews, his anti-Semitism, and his hatred of whites and white America. That's the kind of man Derek Bell was. That's the kind of crowd Barack Hussein Obama not only ran with, but in fact idolized. He studied under Derek Bell. He glorified and championed Derek Bell. And so now, at this rally, the reason why these students come out in protest, where Obama gives a keynote speech introducing Derek Bell, is because Derek Bell is angry. He is furious. Why is he furious? Because he is complaining that Harvard Law is not hiring enough African-American professors and especially African-American women professors, that there is inherent discrimination on campus against African-American women. Never mind about racial set-asides. Never mind about affirmative action. Let that go. For Derek Bell, that's not enough. There has to be even more. And so now Derek Bell has stirred up the campus. Now Derek Bell is waving the bloody cloth, the bloody rag, of racism and racial discrimination against blacks. And so Obama now comes out and gives this announcement to the crowd. Boys, roll the tape. And I remember that the black law students had organized an orientation for the first year students. And one of the persons who spoke at that orientation was Professor Bell. And I remember him sauntering up to the front and not giving us a lecture, but engaging us in a conversation and speaking the truth and telling us that he has to learn at this place that I've car carried with me ever since. Now, how did this one man do all this? How has he accomplished all this? He hasn't done it simply by his good looks and easy charm. <laughs> Although he has both in ample measure. He hasn't done it simply because of the excellence of his scholarship. Although his scholarship has opened up new vistas and new horizons and changed the standards of what legal writing is about. Open up your hearts and your minds to the words of Professor Derek Bell. This is what Breitbart.com released to the media. Now, let me just say a few things. Remember that the people at Breitbart.com are claiming this was the smoking gun. This was the video that was going to bring down the president in November. This was the video that was so damaging that the Obama people didn't want to see this come to the light of day. That this was the video that would expose him once and for all for the radical Marxist that he is, he would now be, quote, thoroughly vetted this time, unquote. We know Obama's a radical. We know he spent 20 years in the church of Reverend Jeremiah Wright. We know he believes in black liberation theology. We know that. We know he hates America. We know he hates Israel. We know he believes that America is a fundamentally, irredeemably racist, homophobic, chauvinist nation. We know that already. So the fact that he's running around with somebody like Derek Bell, praising Derek Bell, introducing Derek Bell, that's no different than his association with Bill Ayers, with Bernadine Dorn, with Jeremiah Wright, with Father Flager with all of the radical Marxist anti-American leftists he's been running with his entire career. We know that about him. So when they were billing this days and days and days up to tonight, 
saying, here was the video. They had the video. Here was the smoking gun. I was licking my chops. I said, okay, we have. That somehow is going to bring this man down. What incendiary statement. Now, but unless there is something more here. This is a non-smoking gun smoking gun. There's no smoking gun here. Okay, he's stupid. Yes, he's introducing an obvious phony, an academic fraud, uh, a disgusting hate monger, uh, somebody who's been playing the racial, who played the racial card his entire career. We know that. Okay, Derek Bell, a Marxist, another one. As if we need more evidence that the president wasn't influenced by Marxists, hasn't uh, idolized Marxists, hasn't been indoctrinated and inculcated by Marxists and, and, and anti-America haters. We know that. But if this is all you have, uh, there's no smoking gun here. This is much ado about nothing. It's further confirmation. It's more evidence. Okay. I agree with you. It's one more piece in the puzzle. But to me, you don't, you don't know who this man is? What else does he have to do? He's bankrupting this country. He's spending us off a financial cliff. He is breaking the back of American business. He wants to give amnesty to illegal immigrants. He has gays openly serving in the military. He's assaulting religious freedom. He's assaulting the Catholic Church. He won't enforce our borders. He has betrayed Israel. He has armed and aided and abetted radical Islamists in Libya. He's put the Muslim Brotherhood in power in Egypt. He has strengthened China. He has appeased Russia. What more evidence do you want? This to me is unbelievable. So now we have some little video of him 20 years ago as a little punk, as a punk college student, graduate student, going on and, and raving about Professor Derek Bell. This is what's going to bring down the President of the United States to people at Breitbart.com. <laughs> I hope this is just a tease. Because if this, is, uh, uh, if, if this is what you have in your arsenal, this is going to be one of the biggest flops uh, I've, I've seen in years. 1-800-449-8255. What do you make of this video, what you just heard, this audio clip? And do you think it's a smoking gun that exposes the radicalism of Obama? I want to hear from you, Jeff Cooner from the Washington Times, sitting in for the living legend, Michael Savage, on the Savage Nation. This is Jeff Cooner from the Washington Times, sitting in for Michael Savage on the Savage Nation. You want a smoking gun? Here is a smoking gun tape, right here for all of you listeners of the Savage Nation. FBI agent Larry Grathwall infiltrated the weather underground. This is the crowd of Bill Ayers, Bernadine Dorn. These are the people that Obama affiliated and associated himself with for over a decade before he became president. Grothwall is now giving testimony. And by his own testimony, he says, once he infiltrated the weather underground, they were talking about a Marxist revolution in America, capturing the American government, bringing in the Soviet Union, bringing in China, bringing in Cuba. And the kicker is then these members of the weather underground said, we will have to send 25 million Americans into re-education camps. And if they're not re-educated, well, we're just going to have to slaughter them and wipe them out, as was done in Cambodia, in China, and in Soviet Russia. Here is Larry Grathwall, the FBI agent, in his own words. Boys, well, I brought up the subject of what's going to happen after we take over the government. Uh, you know, we, we become responsible then for administrating, you know, 250 million people. And there was no answers. No one had given any thought to economics. How are you going to clothe and feed these people? 
The only thing that I could get was that they expected that the Cubans and the North Vietnamese and the Chinese and the Russians would all want to occupy different portions of the United States. They also believed that their immediate responsibility would be to protect against what they called the counter-revolution. And uh, they felt that this counter-revolution could best be guarded against by creating and establishing re-education centers in the Southwest. Uh, where we would take all the people who needed to be re-educated into the new way of thinking and teach them how things were going to be. I ask, well, what is going to happen to those people that we can't re-educate, that are die-hard cap capitalists? And the reply was that they'd have to be eliminated. And when I pursued this further, they estimated that they would have to eliminate 25 million people in these re-education centers. And when I say eliminate, I mean kill 25 million people. I want you to imagine sitting in a room with 25 people, most of which have graduate degrees from Columbia and other well-known educational centers, and hear them figuring out the logistics for the elimination of 25 million people. And they were dead serious. That was FBI agent Larry Grothwall. He had infiltrated the weather underground in the late 60s, early 70s. And this was later his testimony. That's who Bernadine Dorn is and was. That's who Bill Ayers is and was. That's the kind of people that Barack Hussein Obama ran with, affiliates with, and associated with. The mass murder of 25 million Americans on American soil, having this country occupied by the Chinese, the Cubans, and the Soviets. And this is the man, Bill Ayers, and Bernadine Dorn, who to this day are poster childs, poster children, for the 60s and for American liberalism. My friends, forget Derek Bell. We already have the smoking gun. And the only question I have for the American people is this. How could you allow a man like Barack Hussein Obama, with his obvious radical Marxist ties, into the Oval Office? My friends, we have a fifth column in this city. We have a fifth column in America, and that is Barack Obama, and that's why he must be defeated in November. Jeff Cooner, sitting in for Michael Savage on the Savage Nation.